بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Indeed all praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him, we seek his help and we seek his forgiveness We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, then none can guide. I bear witness and I testify that nothing has a right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and he has no partners. And I bear witness and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. As for that which follows, فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Indeed, the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah. وَخَيْرَ الْهُدَى هُدَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The best guidance and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا The worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Every newly invented matter is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدَعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ Every innovation is misguidance. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every misguidance is in the hellfire. The religion of Islam encourages us and it teaches us to display and to have the best of character and the best of manners. And it warns us of every despicable quality and characteristic. And one of the worst qualities and characteristics that a Muslim can have is envy and jealousy. It was stated by Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimahullah ta'ala وَيُقَالُ الْحَسَدُ أَوَّلُ ذَنْبٍ عُصِيَ اللَّهُ بِهِ فِي السَّمَاءِ He said it is stated that the first sin by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was disobeyed with in the heavens was envy and jealousy. وَأَوَّلُ ذَنْبٍ عُصِيَ بِهِ فِي الْأَرْضِ And it's the first sin by which he was disobeyed in the earth. فَأَمَّا فِي السَّمَاءِ فَحَسَدُ إِبْلِيسَ لِآدَمِ As for in the heavens, then this refers to the jealousy and the envy that Iblis had for Adam alayhi salam. وَأَمَّا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَحَسَدُ قَابِيلْ لِهَابِيلْ As for on the earth, then this refers to the jealousy that Qabil had for his brother Habil. And these were the two sons of Adam alayhi salam. And the scholars have defined Al-Hasid by Tamani zawali ni'mati la al ghayr That jealousy and envy is hoping and wishing that the blessing of Allah leaves a person. وَقِيلَ الْحَسَدُ كَرَاهَ مَا أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ بِهِ عَلَى الْغَيْرِ And likewise it was said, that jealousy and envy is hating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed a person with. And this is just one of the many qualities and characteristics of the Jews. قال الله عز وجل أم يحسدون الناس على ما آتاهم الله من فضل The meaning of the verse. Or are they jealous of the people because of what Allah has blessed them with? فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا And we have given the family of Ibrahim the book and the wisdom. And we have given them a tremendous domain. And the scholars of Tafsir, they mention that this verse is with regard to the jealousy and the envy that the Jews had for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was given the prophethood, that he was given the messengership, and the only reason that prevented the Jews from believing in the Prophet ﷺ was the fact that he was an Arab and he was not from Bani Israel. 
Also another harm and ill effect of jealousy and envy is that it negates a person's iman. Meaning that if a person possesses this quality, then he has deficiency in his faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه That one of you does not truly believe until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And this statement of the Prophet ﷺ necessitates that the believer hates and he dislikes that the blessing of Allah leaves his brother. That the blessing of Allah leaves her, her sister. And if a person desires and if a person wishes that the blessing of his brother leaves him, then this means that he does not truly have iman. And as a result, he has deficiency in his faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تباغضوا Do not hate one another. ولا تحاسدوا And do not be envious of one another. ولا تدابروا And do not turn your backs on one another. وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا And be servants of Allah, brothers. Also, being jealous and envious due to what Allah has blessed some people with will cause an individual to be miserable. It is a reason that will cause a person to be depressed. It was said by Al Hassan Al Basri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Ma ra'itu ghaliman ashbaha bi mazlumin min al hasan. He said, I did not see an oppressor who resembles the oppressed more than the jealous person. Huznun lazim, he's always depressed. Wa nafasun da'im, and he's always envious. Wa aqlun ha'im, and his mind is indecisive. And his regret never stops. Likewise, another harm and ill effect of being jealous and envious of others is that it can take away a person's good deeds. And the reason for this is because in most situations and in most cases, when a person is jealous of someone else, then they oppress that person. They infringe upon the right of that individual. Whether it be by backbiting that person, or slandering that person, or degrading that person in other things. And all of this is from the major sins that can take away a person's good deeds. The Prophet wasallam said, أَتَدْرُونَ مَنْ مُخْلِسِ Do you know who the bankrupt person is? The companion said, the bankrupt person from amongst us is the person who does not have any wealth and any money. So the Prophet said, إِنَّ الْمُفْلِسَ مِنْ أُمَّتِي يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ بِصَلَاةٍ وَصِيَامٍ وَزَكَاةٍ He said, the bankrupt person from my nation is the person who comes on the Day of Judgment and he has prayer, fasting and zakat. وَيَأْتِي قَدْ شَتَمَ هذا. And he insulted this person. He verbally abused this person. وَقَذَفَ هَذَا And he falsely abused this person. And he devoured the wealth of this person. And he spilled the blood of this person. And he physically assaulted this person. So this person and that person that he oppressed, they're going to take from his good deeds. So if this person's good deeds run out before his sins are requited, then he's going to take from the bad deeds of, the, of those people that he oppressed. He's going to take from the sins of those people that he oppressed. Then those sins are going to be placed upon him. Then, he, then he's going to be thrown into the hellfire. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو يتولى الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أما بعد. So based upon what we just mentioned and what we just heard from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. 
we see that the origin of jealousy and envy is impermissible. And it's a major sin. However, the Prophet sallallahu made an exception as it comes in the hadith of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Wherein the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا حسد إلا فثنتين There is no jealousy except in two things, or in two types of people. And what's being referred to here in this hadith is what is called al-ghibta. And this is the permissible jealousy. For example, a person sees his brother, or a person sees their sister with a blessing, and they desire and they wish to have similar, similar to what that person has, without that blessing leaving them. This is permissible. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لا حسد إلا فثنتين There is no jealousy except in two types of people. رجل آتاه الله مالا فسلطه على هلكته بالحق The first is a person whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given him wealth and he spins it in the right way. ورجل آتاه الله الحكمة فهو يقضي بها ويعلمها and the second is a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him wisdom and he acts in accordance to it and he teaches and he teaches it to others. And Shaykh al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala he says, coming upon this hadith, وَأَعْضَضُ مَنْ يُغْبَضْ مَنْ كَانَ عِنْدَهُ مَالْ قَدْ حَصَلَ لَهُ مِنْ حِلَّةٍ He said the greatest type of person that is envy is the one who has wealth which he obtained from a halal means. And this is very crucial and very important that a person's wealth is halal. He's not getting his wealth from a haram means. He's not dealing in, in, in interest. He's not going to the bank and getting a loan. And he's dealing with usury. His wealth is from a halal means. Then he's given the ability and the success to spend his wealth in the right way, in the proper way. Whether it be those things that are obligatory or highly recommended. And this is a reminder for those from amongst us who have been blessed with wealth to remember you're going to be taken into account with regard to your wealth. You're going to be asked how you spend your wealth when you stand before your Lord on Yomul Qiyam. And the only way that your wealth is truly going to be a benefit for you is that you spend it properly. That you spend your wealth in a way and in, in a manner that's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, it can be a source of regret and sadness for a person when they stand before the Lord. He says, So when a person has been given wealth, and he spends that wealth properly, he spends it correctly, he spends it in a way that's pleasing to Allah, then this is the greatest sign that this person has iman. وَمِنْ أَعْظَمِ أَنْوَاعِ الْإِحْسَانِ And it's one of the greatest forms of charity. وَمَنْ كَانَ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ عَلَّمَهُ اللَّهُ إِيَّاهَا فَوُفِّقَ لِبَذْلِهَا فِي التَّعْلِيمِ وَالْحُكْمِ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ He said also the person who has knowledge and wisdom which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught him. And he's given success to exert himself in teaching and judging between the people in truth. فَهَذَانِ النَّوْعَانِ مِنَ الْإِحْسَانِ لَا يُعَادِلُهُمَا شَيْءٍ And these two forms of charity, there is nothing that is comparable to them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to adorn ourselves with those qualities and characteristics that are pleasing to Him. وَفَقَ اللَّهُ الْجَمِيعِ لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give everyone success with that which He loves and He's pleased with. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ We ask our Lord for the good of this life and the good of the hereafter and to save us from the punishment of the fire. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالِمِينَ